Hello and welcome. What we're going to take a look at now is the actual history of acupressure. We'll also um, look at some of um, acupuncture as well because obviously uh, acupuncture and acupressure they will integrate with each other to a certain extent but however over time what you've basically found with more and more research that's actually been undertaken in the field of acupuncture and more so now in the field of acupressure that has brought acupressure more into the healthcare profession and you've got more healthcare professionals now starting to use acupressure mainly because more medical terminologies is actually being utilized in order to be able to explain the function and the physiology under the mechanism of acupressure now one of the key things that I do explain to a lot of my students that I actually teach in acupuncture in itself is you don't always have to needle and people's under the impression that needling is more effective than actually applying pressure to the area. Now, if you was to look at several conditions, for example, you will find that acupressure in a number of occasions will outperform needling, particularly if you're looking at treating myofascial trigger points or any of the acupuncture points that correlates with myofascial trigger points. You're gonna find applying pressure to those areas is gonna be far more effective. And you're looking at many of the um, studies where they've assessed the effect of acupressure and you look at the clinical effect size, it generally outperforms your acupuncture. Mainly because if you give your patient acupressure to do, they can go away and stimulate that. So therefore, it's getting more treatment than say once, twice or three times a week if they had to come into clinic to uh, receive treatment by needling. So it does have its advantage. Uh, if I look, um, when I first qualified uh, following shortly after finishing my master's in acupuncture, which was around about 2010, at that time when I was looking into acupressure and getting more research information, there was limited information. During these last 10 years, research has significantly exploded in the field of acupressure. And there's a lot more research now to support the use of it. So the main objective of today is by the end of the presentation, you'll have knowledge and understanding of the origins of acupressure and also of how it's moved from the Asia into the Western world and how it's actually been more accepted into the Western world and also into our clinical settings. Now, what's interesting, uh, we'll just take a quick look at acupuncture in itself and also with regards to the term um, acupuncture. Acus, which means to needle, and puncture, which is pretty much more pricking. Um, so that's more or less where the term is, the Latin term. But however, if you was to take a look at uh, the image that we've actually got there in front of us, what you'll basically find, or what is actually suggested, is the fact that acupuncture actually originated from people shooting each other with bows and arrows. Now, to a certain extent, that's gonna be quite harsh, because if you take into consideration, you get shot in the arrow, particularly in some of your um, points on your chest, punches the wrong organ, that's gonna be quite life-threatening. And um, you may not recover from certain ailments that that point that may well have been penetrated by that aura would not normally um, stimulate and improve on. Here you've got a chap that's been shot in the leg. And what he's quite happy about is the fact that that point there, it's most likely going to be stomach 38 because that's going to be one of the only points in the leg that is going to actually free up the chap's shoulder so he's quite pleased that he's been shot in the leg and now his shoulder feels that much better that much looser um but as i was saying at them at that time um of life you may well find that you may well get a significant infection from that and may end up losing his leg um, so is that more better than having his frozen shoulder? I think I prefer the frozen shoulder. So that's where it's suggested. So there's no literature to come, you know, directly confirm that, but that's where it's suggested where acupuncture may well have evolved from. Now the history of acupressure in itself, there's a lot of literature out there. I mean, literature on acupressure and the history of acupuncture pressure is more limited than what there is information on acupuncture mainly because there's more research and acupuncture is more classified as being a more higher profession than somebody applying um, acupressure itself. And particularly once you go back to China, you're gonna find 
um, your acupuncturist is more highly regarded as somebody doing acupressure so therefore it's uh, more research and more studied um, within those countries but coming back to acupressure itself it has been suggested that acupressure is the mother of acupuncture and it's been around much longer than actual acupuncture in itself so that's something to bear in mind the beauty of acupressure is it can be applied by a healthcare professional or a skilled practitioner or it can also be applied by the layperson just as effectively i give many of my patients points to stimulate and they go away stimulate those points and come back particularly once i'm dealing with psychological patients patients with psychological issues that's going to be quite important and i find them going away stimulating those points can significantly reduce the whole treatment time and that's where we look at certain studies where patients have gone away and done that in between treatment the whole um, clinical effect size of the treatment is that much greater and that much better now the spread of acupuncture across asia it is said that it's moved from asia to other ports and uh, not just that it's gone from china to japan and also from japan to korea and also India and other places like that. But as I was saying before, you have seen in other countries, such as India, where acupressure has been used and it's suggested to have been used for over 5,000 years within the India in itself. And what you used to basically find is the bodyguards over in India used to treat the kings. So the king's bodyguard used to utilize acupressure to treat them in like in times of sickness and ill health and they the actual technique that was actually that's actually used by um those bodyguards or what you call varma and the um acupuncture is actually referred you know named after the actual gods themselves or it might be the other way around not sure but however very effective in those days very effective at that time with regard to Japan, it's more current. I mean, it has been used for several hundred years in Japan. Um, but however, the main techniques that's actually been used and they've taken it and they've refined it and combined massage with it. And you're going to find now they've got a very effective form of acupressure, which is Shiatsu massage. Now, if you look at studies with regards to Shiatsu massage and you look at back and treating back problems, what you're going to basically find is those studies have been shown to outperform manipulation and joint mobilization um, with regards to the management of the back. What you mainly find is if you manipulate the back, the minute the person steps down from the couch, then you're going to find manipulation will just about outperform the shiatsu uh, and massage. But however, when it says two weeks later and 12 months later, you're going to find your acupressure and your massage will far outperform your manipulation so that's one of the key things to bear in mind the technique is very good you don't have to be a high skilled chiropractor physio um, or osteopath to be able to treat the back when it comes to utilizing acupressure and particularly if you're combining massage with that then you, you are looking at a, a greater treatment protocol i treat many back problems whether it's acute chronic or subacute and in many cases, all I'm actually utilizing is either acupressure or laser onto the uh, points, or I'm actually just applying needles. So if you know the right points to use, and these aren't gonna be points in the back, by the way, then you can get a significantly better treatment outcome. Now, again, it was developed um, in the early 1900s, um, and then it was more or less introduced to the actual public um, in that respect. It was refined more in the 1950s. Once it was actually refined, what starts to happen then is they started to take out some of the Chinese terminologies and utilize more Western terminologies, more Western medical terminologies and uh, more of the anatomy and physiology. Now, by doing so, it was more accepted uh, by medical practitioners. It was introduced into, the, into America um, in the early 1950s what you basically found with regards to in japan in itself when america invaded japan in the second world war they stopped acupressure being used and then once they left it was reinstated now in japan what you basically find in 1964 in japan 
it is actually being accepted by the government and it's normally used alongside your general medical treatment and it's more highly accepted. What you also find is um, shiatsu uh, acupressure is more widely used than any other form of acupressure throughout the world. It's the most recognised form of acupressure throughout the world. Within Korea, they tend to tend to use more hand acupressure and they also do hand acupuncture. Very effective. Um, I had the opportunity of being able to learn some of that when I did my master's degree at Coventry Universities in acupuncture. And one of the key things that I've used it for in the past, which I found very, very effective, is bedwetting in young children. Quite an effective um, treatment modality. Um, so it is more recent um, than um, your shiatsu. So it is more of a recent technique compared to that that's been developed back in 1975. But however, it's still a very good technique that can actually be utilised. Now, if we would just take a quick look at um, the difference between TCM techniques generally and Western techniques, one of the key things is TCM techniques much older, much, much older than Western. Western's more current, but then it's more scientific. It's got more of a scientific underpinning, rapidly developing, whereas TCM is still using terminologies from five or even three or even several thousand years ago. So what they want to do is to keep it traditional. They're not updating and they're still using explanation which they used two, three, four thousand years ago, which I think that is one of the key things that's holding back some of the traditional Chinese. At that time, when somebody says, can you explain this? Obviously, they'll explain it in words, terms that they could use at the time. But however, we have more knowledge in how it works, what it does physiologically, what it works and how it does each individual point. So that's the key thing about TCM is it's not moved on. It's trying to keep it traditional. Therefore, it gives you a lack of understanding of some of the points. So I look at certain studies, even on the TCM aspects, I'm thinking, well, why are you using that point? Um, these points would have been far more effective. So that's why I find in some cases there are drawbacks, but however, their approach is more of a holistic approach. And that holistic approach, unlike Western approach, it's categorization. You go and see your doctor, say for example, you've banged your knee or something like that. They might do a scan and say, oh, you've got arthritis. So you, you put into a category and that category then gives you your diagnosis, which might not necessarily be the most appropriate diagnosis, but you're categorized into an arthritic. Whereas TCM will take more of a holistic. It will look at you as an individual. It look at your mind, it look at your body, it looks at your soul. The mind is a powerful thing and that can have a significant impact on your ability to recover. So they will address both the mind as well as the actual condition that's actually being treated, where that isn't the case. And I find if you treat an individual, since I've learnt a lot of my TCM techniques, when I'm treating somebody now, I always say it is important you combine the treatment of the mind, whether it's emotional, if somebody's anxious about something, you need to address that because that is going to exacerbate the pain. Same again, Western is more symptomology, it's pain. Pain, pain, pain. You go to the doctor, say I've got this wrong with me, they're going to give you um, some pain killing tablets, which it's just going to mask the symptoms. It's not necessarily going to resolve the problem. Again, young lady goes to doctors, maybe with some women's health issues. If she's not on the contraceptive pill, then that's what they're going to do. Therefore, it will mask the problems until she decides she wants a child, she comes off the pill, whatever issues that was there before is still there. It's not resolved. Whereas from a TCM, it looks for the root cause and it targets the root cause. I'll give you a quick example. Um, one of the key things that I treat quite frequently is chemotherapy induced and diabetic induced peripheral neuropathy. Now, if you understand the causative factors as to why the peripheral neuropathy comes about, it's mainly a reaction to the hyperglycemic reaction and it's also a reaction to the chemicals that's used in chemotherapy. It causes inflammation of the nerves. So therefore, in order to address the root cause, you need to be choosing points that will reduce inflammation. 
okay and not just points that's just going to purely address the pain because if you're just going to purely choose points on pain you can use the four gates large intestine four liver three will address the pain but it's not going to address the inflammatory process of the actual nerves so therefore what you're going to get is a short-term relief as opposed to getting down to the root cause and that's what your TCM will allow you to do is take more of a holistic look at the root cause and then target your acupuncture at the root cause so that's where I find it has a better advantage the other key advantage is side effects less side effects significantly you look at the overall studies on side effects and what you're going to basically find is those studies will show you that there's very minimal adverse side effects or adverse reactions and the ones that are present are very minor when it compare it to western adverse effects from medication can be quite severe as I was saying beforehand, studies now, there is a large number of studies that are starting to come out. The only biggest problem that you're going to find with studies is it's difficult to blind. If you're going to apply a needle or you're going to apply pressure, the patient's going to know you're applying pressure. It might not be on the point, but they're going to know that you put, you're applying pressure. Um, whereas uh, somebody taking a, uh, a tablet that's inert, it doesn't have any active ingredients in, they're not going to know that. So it's easier to blind a patient to treatment with regards to tablet in comparison to um, blinding them to either acupressure or acupuncture in itself. So that's where some of the uh, um, studies may well have their little drawbacks. Now, if we start to look at the history, similar to acupuncture, um, is same again with acupressure. It mainly moved from China throughout the world, mainly started off in France, went to Germany, translated into from French into German, and then uh, later on it starts to make its way into the UK. So it was more in the early 1940s when it was more introduced into parts of Europe. So France was one at first in the, 19, in the 16th century that first started to utilise um, acupuncture. The first medical description of that was in 1680. Um, it wasn't until the 1960s when the British uh, Academy of Western Medical Acupuncture was actually formed. Now, I went up there, um, it was around about 2000, uh, when I went up there and had my first experience. It was a sh very short course. I just wanted to learn, um, you know, some basic understanding of um, acupuncture. It was more dry needling that I actually learned to start with. Uh, but because the short course was so short and it was only two days, I used it for a short while and then I stopped using it because it didn't build my confidence and it didn't build it in the understanding in which I actually wanted. Um, so it wasn't until shortly after that where I went away, did more training, got better understanding and therefore my treatment outcomes started to improve. So I went more from dry needling into learning more from a Western scientific perspective each of the individual acupuncture points. And that gave me a better understanding and therefore my treatment outcome is that much better now. Um, but again, I utilize a combination of acupuncture points and also acupressure on many of my patients. Got some very good results um, from that. But it was mainly up in Merseyside where the first pain clinic uh, was actually um, developed. And this leads us on to the pain gate theory. Now, I've known about the pain gate theory for quite a few years, many years, well before I started doing acupuncture. I'm sure any medical practitioners who's dealing with pain will know about the pain gate theory and they'll know about Melzac and Wall. It wasn't until I'm actually publishing my book um, in acupuncture when I realized that Melzac and Wall was actually looking and um, trying to explain the underlying mechanism of acupuncture. Um, so I didn't realise it was actually on acupuncture where the research was actually being done. I just thought they just came up with a pain gate theory as such. Um, and that was pretty much where acupuncture started to take off because now they could give an explanation as to its underlying effect actually directly on pain and the pain pathways. So now that was understood, more research was actually being undertaken within that field. So thank you for listening. I hope you find that interesting and I hope you find that of use. 
If you've got any question, then please contact me, info at stevebaileyacupuncture.com.